getting fat, I guess. Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, but a little bit chilly winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm or what's left of it. Uh, here on this Saturday, September 19th, 2020, uh, where we had our first hard freeze last night wreaking havoc with three days of summer left to go and uh, oh yes I am Sam Mitchell this is Collapse Chronicles and this is my little uh, co-pilot Sancho Panza and we need to start figuring out uh, when and how to get out of here and escape down to Florida before either Mad Max or winter creeps in and buries us here uh, in in New York. I I just put a small video out where I am renting this place. So uh, four hundred and fifty dollars a month buys you this place between now and May first. If you're interested, please just email me at collapsechronicles at gmail dot com, and we'll talk about how you can live here for the winter while uh, I escape to be uh, killed in Mad Max. But anyway, while we're all still alive, uh, doing what I do every day, and that is chronicling the collapse of this planet, which is why I named the channel Collapse Chronicles, because that's what I do here is chronicle the collapse. So I always have my eye out for articles looking at how the situation is going to be unfolding over the next few years and decades as the 21st century slogs on. And this one right out of today's mainstream media from the good old Guardian. I, you know, I know some people make fun of the Guardian, but still, uh, you know, for a mainstream publication, they're better than most. <clears throat> so what is on the Guardian's mind today? They are over there in California. Uh, so you can take a wild guess. So I'm going to put the link on here and advise you to read this article yourself. Uh, but if you don't feel like doing uh, that and just want me to sit here and read it for you, I'll be happy to do that. I'm not going to get to some of the uh, hopium in the middle, but uh, this is probably two-thirds of the article. Take it away, Guardian. Too late to stop it. Too late to stop it. California's future hinges on managing megafires. Managing megafires, that is yet another uh, oxymoron for the 21st century. You do not manage a megafire. You flee for your life and you get your ass out of California. Uh, anyway. All right, take it away, Guardian. California's Historic wildfires have served up astonishing scenes of destruction that have claimed several dozen lives, incinerated huge tracts of land, and caused dystopian orange skies to loom over a populace choked by toxic smoke. But in time, the sort of destruction and anguish suffered in 2020 may seem routine, even mild. That is exactly what I, I've been saying. We will all look back at the halcyon days of 2020. This is the, the match being lit for the rest of the century. <clears throat> the record scale of the flames, which have consumed an area larger than the state of Connecticut, you know, and we still have, what, three months to go, 
is bringing scientist expectations of the climate crisis into reality rather than merely entering a new but stable era, the U.S. West is on a moving escalator to further extremes. This is Walid Abdullahi, former chief scientist of NASA. Uh, in 20 years from now, the current circumstances will feel more normal. It's not that we are all screwed. I love that. It's not that we are all screwed. No, it's just the people living in the western U.S. Well, it's not just the people living in the western U.S. are screwed. It's, uh, well, we're pretty much all screwed. I, I guess there's a few people Where are we not all screwed? Anyway, uh, according to the chief scientist at NASA, it's not that we are all screwed, but it is too late to put a stop to it. We can slow it, but we cannot stop it now. We can slow it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, slowing uh, megafires. As Book Hermit will tell you, fire is a natural feature of the American West. Millions of acres used to burn each year, and some trees require fire in order to propagate. But conditions are now becoming unmoored. From modern lived experience, the number of days of extreme wildfire weather has doubled in California since the 1980s with the retreat of dousing autumn rains and snowfall expanding the traditional fire season into a year-round battle. This is veteran Santa Barbara firefighter Mike Ellison. Quote, The trees are like a bunch of matches out here, ready to go. These fires have been unbelievable, but also numbing because you're kicked in the head by one fire, and then you have another one. Every year we tell people this was the worst year, which then gets beaten by the next year, and then by the next. It is disheartening and demoralizing. Crews from Israel to Australia have arrived to support exhausted local firefighters, I bet. Okay, just to give one nod to Donald Trump, a century of suppressing low-level fires has stocked forests with plenty of vegetation that now sits in bone-dry soil, baked in rising heat. California is getting hotter by an average of 3 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 1.6 C, over the past century. And this summer, it has roasted. California's Death Valley recorded, perhaps, the hottest temperature ever captured globally, 100 30 degrees Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 54 C in August, a few weeks before Los Angeles County set its, all, its own all-time record of 121 Fahrenheit, otherwise known as 49 C. Um, of course, the governor of California, that fracker, friend of the frackers, Gavin Newsom, quote, we are in the middle of a climate emergency. I am exhausted that we have to continue to debate this issue, close quote, said Newsom before rolling out another red carpet to the frackers. All right. It will get worse as the planet heats up further. The only question is the degree. The degree 
of how much worse it will get and of course how soon uh, it will get worse than you ever imagined quicker than previously thought. Uh, it will get worse, blah, blah. Scientists predict the area scorched by wildfire will increase by 77% by the end of the century with the number of extreme fire days jumping 20% in just the next 15 years, a scenario that raises profound questions over the way life is conducted in the U.S. West in an evolving era of megafire. The crushing expense of major cities across California has caused a housing crisis that has collided with the state's wildfire problem. People seeking an affordable or more bucolic and spacious life have moved a rash of newly built houses carved into the scrublands and pine forest of what is known as the wildland urban interface. As a result, it is estimated that one in four Californians now live in a high-risk fire zone, and my guess is that estimate is a joke, and my guess is four out of five. Uh, while there are some localized rules about clearing potentially flammable vegetation from near dwellings, there are no universally applied building codes to make homes more fire resistant, nor any state plan to steer development away from fire prone er areas. Insurers Insurers facing mounted losses have started to retreat. As a result, homes continue to be built featuring classic wood shingle roofs and deckings that allow burning embers to leap from building to building. Here's the understate. Uh, understatement of this article. This is Paige Fisher, environmental scientist at the University of Michigan. Quote, people often have an idea of aesthetic beauty that makes things more risky. Uh, some towns have faced some towns have faced repeated losses to fire, leading to calls for construction to be discouraged in certain areas, said Fisher. Quote, if you move to a fire-prone area, even if you don't lose your home, you will spend days or weeks each summer under stress, suffering the health risks of smoke. Things have changed dramatically and the livability of fire-prone areas is coming into question, close quote. A more uh, provocative option was summed up in a memorable chapter, in a memorable uh, chapter of the academic Mike Davis's 1998 book titled Ecology of Fear, chapter titled The Case for Letting Malibu Burn. Davis argues that the chaparral around the wealthy coastal enclave was always meant to periodically burn and, and preventing and preventing this cycle only worsens fires there. His suggestion of effectively leaving Malibu to its own defense resonated in 2018 when the huge Woolsey fire swept through the uh, region. Uh, anyway, so now in the middle of this, uh, this story goes into this apocalyptic hopium 
about how, you know, technology and, and, and all of this crap is, is going to al allow people to live where there's wildfires. Uh, you know, nobody, uh, I I anyway, so I'm going to skip over all of this hopium in the middle. Uh, to get back to reality. Uh, okay. But the reach of fire prodded on by the climate crisis extends beyond constructed defenses. The West Coast has been subject to some of the worst air quality in the world with a haze of smoke causing beaches, parks, and schools to shut. Ash has rained down upon cities across the state for several weeks. Doctors have already noted an uptick in hospital admissions from asthma and strokes likely triggered by the wildfire smoke, which is more toxic than most urban sources of pollution. This is Suzanne Paulson, an air pollution expert from UCLA. Quote, Everyone in California has versions of the story that they never had to think about this smoke, and now they do. Yes, the repeated plumes of smoke over the UCLA campus provide Paulson with air samples, but they also deter her from riding her bicycle to work. She also now regularly has fire refugee friends stay with her when they flee flare-ups in the Los Angeles Hills. Quote, we desperately need new housing, but living in some of these wildlands is becoming untenable unless you start building houses out of cement. Okay, moving ahead. All right. The current fires illustrate just the beginning of the threat to which the U.S. West must adapt, what California former Governor Jerry Brown calls, quote, the new abnormal bared its teeth in mid-August when thousands of bolts of lightning exploded upon parts, grasslands, and forests that have been in the grip of a drought the deepest in a millennium for much of the past two weeks, uh, past two decades, sparking hundreds of fires within a few weeks. Three of the four largest fires ever recorded in the state had roared across the landscape. Uh, within a few weeks more, smoke had unfurled as far as New York and Hawaii. You know, I was in the middle of this wildfire smoke in the Adirondack Mountains uh, a few days ago. <clears throat> the fallout has been harrowing. Whole towns melted away to piles of ash and twisted metal. The birds in the trees silenced. And now it appears we have millions of birds falling dead out of the sky probably related to the wildfire smoke. Thousands of evacuees huddled in tents in parking lots. Uh, the fires have been so fierce, advancing by as much as 25 miles a day, that they have created their own weather system. Giant clouds of ash and smoke have billowed 10 miles high beyond the standard altitude of a commercial airliner as fire tornadoes tear up the trees below. The crisis is playing out across different states and ecosystems. In Oregon, more than 500,000 people, a tenth of the population, have faced orders to flee. This is Doug Franke, a pastor who was covered in falling ash as fire crackled around the town of Malala, Oregon. What do the preachers, the hellfire and brimstone doomsday preachers have to say about it all? 
quote, apocalyptic is about the right word. The Bible talks of the earth being desolate, and it is and it was about that. And it was, it was about apocalyptic and desolate, and it will be uh, apocalyptic and desolate in the future if it's n not already. California and Oregon will increasingly have to wrestle the trade-offs between a lifestyle that remains idyllic for many people and the multiplying risks of fire the need for those hard decisions is perhaps now clearer than ever. The front page headline of the LA Times screamed, California's climate apocalypse on Sunday. Uh, the problem won't just vanish on its own, said Abdullati, quote, California has nice weather and beautiful scenery, but that is changing. If you have frequent evacuations, have to stay indoors from the smoke and wear a mask because of the ash in the air, some of the appeal will likely be gone. There will be decisions made at an individual level over whether to stay or to go. And uh, this is the very reason that Sancho and I decided not to move to California, to Northern California or Oregon or Washington. That was our plan uh, for years is that I was going that this old climate refugee was going to sell his place on a floodplain in Texas in 2020 and move somewhere between Northern California and the British Columbia line. We spent three years out, three summers out there, and every single summer, uh, 2015, 16, and 17, we were run out by the wildfire smoke. And uh, I'm sure the people in 2020 remember the halcyon days of 2015, 16, and 17, just as the people a few years from now will remember the good old days of 2020. Uh, anybody who would think of moving to California at this point completely lost their minds. But anyway, guys, uh, I need to wrap this up and get out there and shovel about seven yards of uh, horse manure uh, onto my garden uh, to get it ready for the winter while uh, your old snowbird climate refugee prepares to flee uh, upstate New York back to Florida this summer. Uh, anyway, if you like what the garden that the Guardian had to share with you, please thumb up this video. Feel free to uh, whatever that word is, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles, and I really do appreciate uh, the support of anyone who has ever uh, helped me out for whatever it is that I do on YouTube, which is to chronicle the collapse of a planet to help you decide how what you're going to do about it and encourage you to get out there and enjoy it while you still can. If you want to rent this place, send me an email. Bye, guys. This little dog, are you ready to go shovel horse manure? Bye, guys. Yes.